This is the official Xbox wireless headset from Microsoft that promises high quality audio with a low latency, 100% wireless connection without the need for a dongle or a base station, and the added bonus of Bluetooth connectivity for other devices such as PCs and mobile phones. There's also support for surround sound technologies such as Windows Sonic, Dolby Atmos, and DTS Headphone X, all wrapped up in a package that only costs $99. This could be your ideal next headset. But is it any good? Welcome to my tech gear, let's find out. Before we go any further, if you do enjoy the video, please don't forget to like and share it. And if you're not subscribed yet, then please consider doing so using the buttons down below and hitting that notification bell so you're notified about new videos as and when I post them. It really helps me build up this channel so that I can keep making videos like this for you. Thanks. So out of the box, there really isn't too much to this really is just the headset. It does also come with a USB charging cable as well. That's pretty much it. I really like the design of this. It's understated, well, at least for a gaming headset. You've got a nice matte black finish over the top of the headband with a steel band in the middle, making it nice and strong. The foam pad here is nice and thick as well, so it's gonna be comfortable on your head. Um, it's actually solid on these little two bits on the extremes as well, with the foam padding being in the middle, but that's where most of the weight sits anyway, so I don't see that being a problem. The range here is really nice and big, so it's going to fit a range of sizes and it's really easy to adjust. Once you do adjust it and you put it into place, it locks the headset, so it's not gonna move on your head. So I'm pulling down on these and it doesn't move at all. Once I take these off, they move again. So that's a really nice feature. The foam on the ear pads too is really nice and deep. So you can see it's a nice memory foam that sort of bounces back really nice and easily. And that depth of foam is gonna help it fit a range of head sizes. The ear pads themselves are also nice and large. So again, it's about fitting a range of head sizes. It's also easy to tell left from right because left and also right is massively printed in clear letters on the inside of the ear cups. One thing I don't like so much about the ear pads is that there's not much movement either sort of vertically or horizontally. You can only see them moving a very tiny bit uh, on the vertical front and really nothing at all on the horizontal. That really is just the headband moving itself. However, when you actually put these on, it doesn't really seem to make much of a difference and I found these super comfortable. Now, I am cheating a little bit here because I've actually been playing with these for a few weeks now, so this isn't the first time I'm trying these on. So I can absolutely say that even with the limited movement in the ear cups, these fit great and are super comfy. There is plenty of space inside the ear cups for my ears and it nicely fits and seals around the outside of my ears rather than on them. And these are also comfortable even if you wear glasses. They don't force the glasses into your head, at least no more than any other headset does. And I can quite happily wear these with my glasses for hours at a time. Now for wireless headsets and even compared to some wired ones, these are actually pretty light, only 11 ounces or 312 grams. Now if you compare that to the Logitech G Pros I reviewed the other week, which are a wired headset, they weigh more at 320 grams. Meanwhile, rival wireless headsets like the Razer Kyra Pro for Xbox weigh in at 330 grams. So here, you're getting a very lightweight headset in comparison, and that's really important as you'll feel the benefit in longer gaming sessions. Connectivity-wise, this works with the Xbox Series X and S and the Xbox One consoles. No dongle is needed for this as it uses the Xbox wireless protocol. It also works with Windows 10 PCs, either via Bluetooth or using an Xbox USB wireless adapter. And it will also work with any mobile phone connecting through Bluetooth. On the right hand side, we have this massive volume dial, which is the whole headset for easily being able to change the volume up and down by moving that dial forwards and backwards. And on the left hand side, we have the same kind of dial, but this time it's controlling the gamer mic mix. So it allows you to easily change the balance between how much audio or the in-game audio you can hear and also your chat from your teammates as well. Again, super easy to get your hands on in the middle of a game. And underneath here, we've got a mic mute button, which is right at the bottom of the mic boom. And also on the left hand side, we have this big green button that acts as both the power and the sync button and charging is done via the provided USB cable and the USB-C port on the right hand side of the headset which provides up to 15 hours of battery life on a single charge. The most important aspect of any headset is sound quality. And for $99, these are actually pretty good. There is one thing you must do though to make it sound better, and that is turn surround sound support on in the settings on the Xbox. Enabling the surround sound really opens up the sound stage and works great on the Xbox, and is a significant step up from the uncompressed stereo option. I selected the Windows Sonic setting for this. You can also use other surround sound options too, like Dolby Atmos and the DTS Headphone X. 
but you have to purchase an app in order to get those. Windows Sonic, I thought, did a good job. I will say that this headset is definitely bass heavy, overly so. It's just so much bass out of the box and not in a good way. It's too loose and muddy. Fortunately, you can improve this and tweak this to your liking, which I'll get to later in the video. These are not going to sound better than headsets costing three times the price, but at only $99, once you've got the sound profile set up okay, with the surround sound enabled, it's a great set for gaming. With these being a closed back pair of headphones, the sound isolation on these are good, and I have trouble hearing anyone whilst I'm playing, and likewise, they can't hear the sound from the game. Great for when I'm gaming, not so much when I'm trying to get my son's attention whilst he's playing though. The small mic boom here is great for keeping the mic out of the way, however that does mean that the mic light is only just visible for me if I look to the left. Now I could only just about see it, but I could see it being a potential issue depending on the shape of your face, which could cause an issue if you're using that to check whether your mic is muted or not. With the boom arm being so short though, does that impact the sound quality? Let's find out. So now I've got the headset hooked up over Bluetooth to a PC so you can hear exactly what it sounds like. So this is the audio as is. There's no post-processing of audio. It's exactly as it's being recorded. So what you're trying to listen to is the quality of my voice. Does it sound natural? Does it sound overly processed? Actually, let me know in the comments down below what you think of the mic quality. Now I have to say, I think the mic test was really good and you get really good clear audio out of this, which is pretty impressive for a gaming headset let alone a $99 one. Connectivity wise, as mentioned before, it can connect to your Xbox console using the Xbox wireless protocol, but it also has Bluetooth connectivity built into it, and so will work with any Bluetooth enabled device for audio, such as your PC or even your mobile phone. Even better, it can actually do both at the same time. This is really useful as you compare them with your mobile phone whilst connecting to the Xbox. This enables you to hear your phone ring on your headset while you're gaming. Now that might put you off your game for a bit, but at least you won't miss that call. Battery life here is typical of wireless headsets near this price point, with Microsoft quoting 15 hours of usage on a single charge. I actually got a couple of hours more than that though in my tests, which is really good to see. Now battery life can vary depending upon how you use it. For instance, if you have it connected to two different devices at the same time and you have the volume turned up to max, then expect the battery to need recharging sooner. The battery will recharge from zero to full in about three hours, but you can also do a 30 minute quick charge to give you four hours of playback. Now the headset doesn't have a three and a half mil jack, so you can't plug it into your controller when it runs out of power. Fortunately though, you can still use them whilst they're charging. Just make sure you have a long USB cable to do it. If you want to check how much power is left on your headset, then check out the battery indicator available in the top right of your Xbox home screen. That's a real quick and easy way to see how much power you have left. The Xbox Accessories app is what allows you to change the sound profile and some feature settings of the headset and is available on both the Xbox and Windows 10. And you definitely need it to change the out of the box sound profile. On the Xbox, simply go into the settings menu and select devices and then accessories. This is the accessories app. Once on that screen, select the configure button to configure your headset. If you're doing the same on a PC, you will need to install the accessories app from the Windows store. Once it's installed, launch it, and once the headset is connected to the PC, you will see it appear in the app and you can select the configure button, same as you would on the Xbox. Now, there is a massive caveat to this though. This is only gonna work if you connect the headset to the PC via either a USB cable or an Xbox USB wireless adapter for PC. If you connect the headset to your PC via Bluetooth, it will not work. Well, the headset will work, but it won't appear in the app for you to be able to change the settings. The app is also not available for iOS or Android devices, so if you're hooking them up to a mobile phone, that's not going to work for you either. Fortunately for both of these scenarios, that might not be a deal breaker here, as once your settings are set up, those settings persist in the headset. So those settings will persist across all your devices, regardless of whether the app is installed or not. So as long as you can hook the headset up to one device with the app on it, then you're sorted. So I would suggest either setting it up on an Xbox or via a USB cable on a PC, and then you can use it on whatever device you want. Probably the most important option here is the equalizer. This gives you access to a five band graphic equalizer, which provides five different preset settings, as well as a custom option. By default, the game setting is selected. At this setting is incredibly bass heavy. If that's your thing, then fine, but for me, it's way too heavy on the bass. So the first thing I did was select the custom option and tweaked it to my liking. Now, this is going to vary from person to person, but these are the current settings that I've got set if you want to use those as a starting point. 
And yes, there is a bass boost feature here too, but please don't turn it on. It's bass heavy enough already, and turning this on just completely ruins the bass, in my opinion. Auto mute silences your mic when you're not speaking, and this is really useful if you're playing in a noisy environment or if you're a heavy breather. The higher the setting, the more aggressive the auto mute is, and it will block out more sound. I've got it set to medium, which for me was a good balance. The mute light adjusts the brightness of the mute light on the boom mic. Settings range from low to medium to high, but you can't turn it off. Mic monitoring is, for me, a great added feature here that just makes conversations between you and your teammates so much more comfortable. It basically allows you to control how much of your own mic audio you can hear through the headset. Having this mic pass through allows you to clearly hear yourself so you can actually hear yourself talk clearly. It's a great feature and I think once you try it, you'll never switch it off. With all that said and done, should you buy it? There is so much on offer here for such a comparatively low price. Having native wireless connectivity to an Xbox console with the added bonus of Bluetooth connectivity to secondary devices, with the ability to tweak its settings all wrapped up in a lightweight comfortable package, with sound that at this price point is more than good enough, well, that's a hard package to ignore, especially at $99. However, you only really get the most out of this headset if Xbox gaming is your primary focus. And honestly, the green color scheme of the headset should kind of give the game away there. So if Xbox is your focus, this is the cleanest, easiest, cheapest way to go wireless. I'd definitely recommend it. If you're looking for a headset for both Xbox and PC gaming, then I'd definitely consider these. The competition does start to heat up though. If you're looking for a headset solely for PC gaming though, then I'd definitely look elsewhere. There are just better headsets out there that offer more compatibility and more features for a PC. I hope that's helped you decide whether the Xbox Wireless headset is your next gaming headset. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to like and share. Consider subscribing if you're not. And as always, see you in the next one.